Black History Month is nearing and man do we have a show for you. Our fine arts department has been all hands on deck to prepare for the month of February and we are all very excited to show you our amazing work. We hope you enjoy and without further ado, let us present our Black History Month program. first African author of a published book of poetry. I spent so much of my life enslaved. I am finished with me and I am Black History. If you listen to people and allow people to project their fears onto your life, you won't live. I was born on September the 11th in Washington, D.C. I am an American actress. I studied acting at Howard University. I began my Hollywood career in guest roles on several TV shows. I am Taraji P. Henson. Thank you. I was born on January 16th in 1979. I'm a singer, actress, and model, and I have successfully sold over 32 million albums worldwide and about 8.1 million albums in the United States. I am Aaliyah. I was born on March 27, 1970. I have a five octave vocal range, but the ability to reach notes in the seventh octave vocal range. One of my most famous songs, All I Want For Christmas Is You, topped the Hot 100 in 2019, making me the first artist in four different decades to top the chart. I am Mariah Carey. I refuse to take no for an answer. I was born January 26, 1892 in Atlanta, Texas. I am the first African American woman and also the first Native American to hold a pilot license. I also took the record as the first female pilot with American descent. I am Betsy Coleman. I was born January 17, 1942 in Louisville, Kentucky. Two things in my know for me are part of my quotes in my career. One of my famous quotes is, flow like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I was also a very famous boxer, nicknamed The Great. I am Muhammad Ali. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but like dust, I'll still rise. I was born on April 4th in 1928. I was an African-American poet, a civil rights activist, and an award-winning author. One of my most famous poems, And Still I Rise, was inspired by not letting little things get in your way of success, as well as gaining self-respect and self-confidence. I died on May 28th in 2014. I am my Angela. We ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We brave the belly of the beast who learned the quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours. Before we knew it, somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken and simply unfinished when the successors of our country in a time 
where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother and can dream of becoming a president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polish. Far from. forms of African American music were imported with the slaves themselves. Slaves brought knowledge of West African musical instruments like drums, zithers, xylophones, and the banjo. As slavery settled into the entrenched pecular institution in the South, slaves used music to ease the drudgery of their lives and sometimes to send messages. The end of the Civil War freed the slaves, but the cotton glut after Reconstruction left most of the South desperately poor. At the turn of the century, a more upbeat sound was heard from, believe it or not, barbershops. In the depths of World War I, a new sound began sweeping the world. Originating in New Orleans, jazz was the instrumental equivalent of the barbershop quartet. In Chicago, the first jazz soloist appeared. Many like Louis Armstrong would become famous in their own right. Beginning in Detroit, also called Motor City, a new sound emerged. The swing era sound picked up a faster beat, more bass, fewer rhythms, and burst until the music world as rhythm and blues, also known as R&B. Rap music and the culture that surrounds rapping itself Hip hop is a genre of music and a lifestyle which originated in the housing projects of New York City. New York in the late 1970s, but which now has global influence. While not without controversy in numerous cities, rap music has emerged as one of the most popular musical forms in the world. It's been a long, a long 
time coming, but I know a change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will.
HBCU stands for Historical Black Colleges and University. Did you know that there are 107 HBCUs located in the United States? Right here in Texas, there are seven HBCUs and one here in Dallas, which is Paul Quinn College. Prior to the Civil War, the education of Black Americans was prohibited in most Southern states, and only a few colleges in the Northern states allowed Blacks to be educated, like Lincoln University and Wilberforce University. They established these colleges to educate children of former enslaved people and train them to teach other Black Americans. Many of you did not know, but now you know, that our first Black female, Vice President Harris, attended Howard University, which is an HBCU located in Washington, D.C. At IL Texas Lancaster, the Soto Middle School and High School, there are several staff that attended HBCUs. I am one of them. I attended the Wilberforce University located in Ohio because it was the first black owned and operated university where the Underground Railroad connected. And I am Miss Wilberforce University and I was featured in Ebony Magazine. Quincy Lipsy. I attended Wilberforce University. Wilberforce was the first HBCU founded in 1856. I chose Wilberforce for its beliefs, family oriented setting, academic and historical values. The University of Arkansas at Palm Bluff, uh, because I'm from Palm Bluff, first and foremost. Uh, secondly, it is an historical black college. And third, uh, because I'm a third generation graduate, grandparents, parents, and as well as my Myself have graduated from this great institution. Hi, my name is Gashay Wallace, and I attended Prairie View AM because of the Marshall Storm in their education program. I love my HBCU, and I marched for five years. My name is Raja Muhammad, and I am a proud graduate of Prairie View AM University. My decision to attend Prairie View came down to three simple things. I wanted a school with a strong engineering program, a good track team, and a school that was rich in heritage, culture, and history. And I found all three of those things in Prairie View AM University. Lady Bulldog here. I chose Fisk University because of its small, family oriented atmosphere and because it was a place where I did not have to be a minority. Ms. Farrell, and I went to the Norfolk State University, home of the Spartan Legion Marching Band where we are the best band in the land. Behold the green and the gold. Okay, as you can see clearly, I went to one of the baddest, one of the smoothest, the most authentic HBCUs known in this world. You guys, I am a graduate of the Grambling State University where everybody is. Southern University and A&M College in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm also representing the human jukebox. We are often imitated, but never ever duplicated. I will always bleed blue and gold. So Southern University, let's go Jags.
feel like you have more to do? Yes, that's why I'm still here. I mean, what my life became is not what I expected. I had no idea that I would touch anybody. When the time comes, what do you want us to remember about you? I've done my best. That's all. Step, step on them, kick on them, something you step, swag the right, surf to left. 